If you're a smart citizen of Disneyland, you know more than most guests, but did you know that nearly on every single visit to Disneyland, you have walked right past several Disneyland hidden control rooms that today you're gonna learn aren't so hidden. And even though you never noticed them in the past after today's video, you'll notice them every time you come and you'll also understand why they're in those places and how these locations can benefit your experience at Disneyland. So have you ever wondered how Disneyland hides its control rooms? Because obviously to put on a show this big every single day, there has to be a ton of production that's happening. But if that production is spotted by the guests, it ruins the illusion of Disney being a place of magic that just operates on its own. Even a smart fan like you not noticing them is an important part of the magic. For Disneyland to work its best, you should be lost in the show and not thinking about how it's controlled. And you're never gonna believe it, but you've probably walked past all six of them on every single visit to Disneyland. And at the end of today's video, I'm gonna show you one of the most important buildings on the west end of Disneyland. This building does six different important things. And if you look at it from the street, it looks like it's smaller than your garage at home. Greetings, fellow citizens of Disneyland. Bricky here today breaking down the hidden control rooms of Disneyland that aren't hidden anymore and why they're important to your next visit. Let's start with a quick one inside of Fantasyland because after all, Fantasyland is where anything's possible, including magic. And there's a hidden control room, a very small one, that creates a lot of magic for one lucky guest. And as you'll see today, not all of these control rooms are complicated. Some of them are so simple and analog, but create that dizzy magic without you noticing. So this one is hard to see during the day, but I'm gonna show you where you should look at night. And this is a fun fact that you can dazzle your friends with because uh, it's a real magic spot. Now friends, if you've ever dreamed of removing the sword from the stone, let me show you how this magic trick works. It's not gonna happen unless this hidden control panel right here works in your favor. When you come through here at night, you've probably never noticed, but if you look in this window, you'll see a little green light. And that green light is where a cast member, somewhere where I'm standing, can hit a little controller. And when that controller is hit, activated with this light, the sword comes out of the zone. That's how they make this magic trick happen without anybody knowing what the trick was. With one hidden cast member standing somewhere in this area, waiting for the proper child to make their wish, and then they hit the trigger and the sword comes out. That's Disney magic, and it's done in such a basic analog way with just one trigger at this window right here. Now this window isn't the only other window that at night when you peer through it, you'll see a different story than what you see during the daytime. Let's go over to Main Street for another hidden control room that reveals itself at night. This location is really hard to see during the day. In fact, it's impossible to see during the day. I'm not gonna overly show you where because I don't know how much of this I should be filming, but I will tell you this, when you stroll out of the park at night, if you look through one of these windows, you will notice that you've just stumbled upon an absolute massive observation area, a wall full of video screens showing, a, I believe, a security cast member what's happening in nearly every single corner of the park. The first night that I walked by and saw it, I was stopped dead in my tracks and was like, whoa, did, did I just see what I thought that I saw? It would make sense that this one would be located here, making good use of the second floor that we as guests never get to adventure into. However, using the second floors for operational purposes. Because as I believe on the other side of this part of Main Street is a big open area with easy access from Harbor, making this area a really great spot to do a handoff Your of the bad guy to the Anaheim Police Department. Uh, Easy to miss at the end of the day when you're tired, your head's down, and you're just focused on the tunnel to wrap up a magical day at Disneyland. This one is right here for you to discover. All you have to do, friends, when you're inside of Disney parks, always look up. When you look up, that's where you see, but that's also where you see Disney place a lot of the different operational tools that they need to make Disneyland run so beautifully. Friends, 
Thank you so much for showing up on today's adventure. I hope you're enjoying seeing all of these secret areas of Disneyland. Let's not make me one of those secrets. Let's subscribe to Hey Bricky, help me grow the channel, and keep taking you on three curated videos each week where we look at the past and present of Disneyland, trying to predict its future and where it's going, giving you a window into the magic when you can't get back home to Disneyland. Thank you so much for subscribing to Hey Bricky. I appreciate you. Now let's get back to today's video. I love this topic and I hope you do too. This next one absolutely fascinates me and shows Disney's dedication to not only story, but story and Disney magic. I have a riddle for you. Why does this American flag get pulled down every afternoon at sunset and get raised up every single morning? But these other American flags on Main Street stay up 24 hours a day. The reason why is this. This American flag is the only real American flag on Main Street USA. The others are perfectly disguised wind socks, proving that a control room doesn't need to be digital technology. It can also be analog technology. Let's break this one down real quick and then show you the other hidden control room on Main Street that ties in to these flags. We are surrounded by a neighborhood, we're surrounded by a city, and therefore the fireworks have to go off with the utmost concern for safety for not only the guests inside of Disneyland, but all the good neighbors that surround us outside of the berm. And one of these safety factors are wind conditions. There's two different wind tests that Disneyland runs every single night. But the first one is looking at these three fake American flags to make sure that they're giving the proper wind signals for a safe fireworks show. Now you say, how is it a fake American flag? It is somewhere off in its pattern. Maybe a star short, maybe a star too many, but these are not precise American flags. They're designed to look like them. They're designed to invoke the feelings of a Main Street USA at the turn of the century, but they are perfectly disguised control panels for Disney to quickly look up and down Main Street and realize what kind of wind that they're dealing with at a very important height for wind conditions. Because you gotta keep in mind, up above the buildings is where the wind takes off and that's where the fireworks are gonna get pushed maybe too far to the east or too far to the west. And also don't forget, we have a major California highway running right behind Small World, right behind Toontown, where the fireworks are shot off every evening. So these fictional flags play a huge part in the Disneyland fireworks show, and you've seen them on every single trip, and maybe you didn't notice that you were looking at a Disney control panel. There is one more wind check that we do, and this wind check happens at a hidden control room on Main Street, USA. Let's go. Somewhere above me in the buildings that are behind me is the control room where they manage the fireworks performance every night on Main Street, USA. Now, I've often theorized that it was somewhere in this area, but after watching a video that Disney released, I could tell by the body language of the Imagineer that works in this area that it is 100% in this area where they monitor the fireworks. And one of the ways they do it is another one of our analog control panels is the building on the corner right here is where they will let a white balloon go every night right before fireworks. If that balloon stays somewhat in the berth of Main Street USA, you're gonna get fireworks. If you see that balloon take off and go far east or far west, it's time to grab your stuff and evacuate because you are not getting a fireworks show that evening. And I love that aside from this also being the front of house where they have all of the digital equipment needed to produce the fireworks show every night, that they also go analog by putting a simple white balloon off into the sky and judging by how the wind affects that balloon, making a judgment call on whether or not fireworks will happen that night at Disneyland. And due to conductive reasoning and personal experience, I would tell you that the absolute best place to watch the fireworks every night is right here in this intersection of Main Street USA. Not only are you in the center of all the building projections, not only do you have a full unobstructed view of the castle and its fireworks, but you are in the middle of where the sound system is. I have never ever regretted watching the fireworks here. And then when it's done, you're only one short block to get on the Main Street train station and escape from all the insanity that is Disneyland post fireworks. 
but it would also make sense that the control room would be in the most optimal viewing area, therefore giving Disney cast members the best amount of data to make decisions based on that night's performance. Why you've probably never noticed it before is when you're standing out in Main Street with your friends and family anxiously awaiting the fireworks, are you really looking up in the sky? And if you are looking up in the sky, are you looking for one single nondescript white balloon to take flight? Probably not. And then the reason why I believe that that control room is somewhere on the second floor on this block of Main Street, you would want to be centrally located where the show's happening. A lot like the front of house we'll discover hidden right in plain view over in Disney's California Adventure. This location, I guarantee you that you have walked right past it or even over it on every single visit to DCA because it's hidden so well in the middle of one of the main arteries of Disney's California Adventure. Do you see it? Do you see this hidden control room? It's clear to see. You just have to know where to look. What we're looking at is the front of house control room for World of Color. This is where each evening engineers mix the show for you to see in real time. Being able to adjust the lighting, projections, mix the music, and even manage when the fire goes off. Everybody loves when the fire goes off. So when you come up here to the World of Color amphitheater, one of Disney's hidden amphitheaters, is that an idea for a video? The hidden amphitheaters of Disney parks? But when you come up here where all the guests are standing, the folks that are actually producing the show for you are right behind me over here, neatly, discreetly tucked beneath the bridge. And how you've missed it is quite easy. You probably walked over this bridge on nearly every single visit to DCA, and you probably stood right here waiting for the show to happen, but you were staring at what they were staring at, where the show's gonna happen and not looking in the opposite direction to figure out how does it work. So if you're wondering why this location, it's quite simple. Whenever you do any live performance, whether it be a concert or a light show like this, you want to have a perfect centered line of vision of the show that you're producing. That way you get optimal sound and optimal visuals so you can catch any mistakes before many of the guests do. So therefore, having all the guests line up here to feel closer to the show gives the guests a better experience. But putting the engineering team that is mixing the show out of sight but with clear sight lines is the best place to put the team that puts on this amazing show. And my advice, if you want to see the best place to view this show, view it from the bridge above where they're mixing it. Because after all, if the engineers have to have the most optimal view, so should you. Never ever go to the first showing of World of Color. It's always congested, crowded, eats up too much time. Always go to the second one when available. Walk up to the bridge. It's a grab it, get it yourself spot five minutes before showtime, and you will have the same view as the engineers that are mixing the show for everyone else. Welcome to the team. But this isn't the only secret window in the park where Imagineers are looking at the show that they are producing. Let's hop over to New Orleans Square where you can see my favorite production window. And oh, to be able to sit in this room and to watch Fantasmic just one night would be a dream of mine come true. <laughs> and of course, when I film this video, there's scrims around this window. <laughs> Hopefully, in historical footage, I can show you what the actual window looks like. But nonetheless, just know that I'm right, that in this window that's now covered by scrims, while they're working on getting Fantasmic ready for coming back online later on this year, up here is the control room that you probably never notice, but it's pretty easy to notice today, where the engineers sit and mix Fantasmic for us each and every night. That is the nucleus, the control room of the show, where on a dark night, you can look up into that window, you can see all their monitors lit, you can see the cast members with the headgear on communicating to each other, because up here is where Phantasmic's magic really happens. Which means if I'm standing straight from where the engineers that mix the show are standing, right here is the optimal viewing area for Fantasmic because the engineers need to have the most precision view possible sitting up there in their crow's nest above the balconies that if you'll notice have both Roy and Walt Disney's initials in them 
is the best place to see this show for a cast member mixing it. So the best place for a guest to see it would be right down here. If you can ever align with that building, if you look straight across, it is a straight view to the dead center of the middle of the island where the stage appears each and every night. So if you ever debated or been curious where the best spot to see Fantasmic is, it's directly below the control room that manages it. And you can't even tell that anything's happening there until you come by at night when the lights are all illuminated and you can see the magic that's happening up there. <laughs> let me show you one of the most important buildings hidden on the western end of Disneyland. I'm a huge fan of the West End. I think this is the best strip of theme park that the Disney Corporation has ever designed. But there's a building here that does so many different things and you would never notice because when you walk by it, it's about the size of your garage. So from a distance, it appears to be a restaurant. And when you exit off of the Haunted Mansion, it just looks like a little riverside shanty. And when exiting from Critter Country over to New Orleans Square, it appears to be about the size of a garage for an average size home in America. One of the most deceptive buildings inside the berm at Disneyland because it does six important things. Ah. Now, unfortunately, due to construction, I can't break down all the things that this building does, but I would love for you to watch this video right here where I take my time and show you six major things that this building does and how Fowler Harbor is deceptively useful to the Disneyland experience, doing so much in a building that you've walked by and probably never noticed on every single visit.